Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jean-Max Lim and joining me today is Dean Boyle, CEO of EcoSense. Um, Dean, welcome to JSA. Um, it's been an eventful year. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, Joao. Yeah, thanks for the uh, call. No, no worries. Um, look, you work in a very particular and very interesting space um, and a space that we are wasting a lot of uh, resources on because a lot of operators don't have visibility into it. Um, so let's dive right in. How serious is the problem um, of energy waste um, or cooling resources being overused due to the lack of visibility into the infrastructure? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And, it, and it's a, definitely a huge problem in the industry. Um, and sadly, it's, it's one that isn't going to get any better uh, unless we start addressing the challenges. And there's some very um, simple, uh, um, low-hanging things we can do to improve the situation. Um, I mean, even this week, obviously, it's a, a very timely um, discussion, this, an IPCC report, which has been well-documented, uh, some very scary quotes in there about rapid large-scale reduction in greenhouse gases, um, and, and it's almost impossible to, to turn back the clock very shortly unless we do something almost immediately. Um, and, and again, well trotted out stats, but data centers, it is well known that data centers are already established as one of the world's highest collectors, uh, consumers of energy. So um, again, I think everybody realizes that data centers are a huge uh, energy consumer, but there is not enough activity going on to, to resolve that. Uh, and, and just things that we're, we're very closely involved with on our side. Um, is the cooling side of it. So again, fairly well known in the industry, but roughly 35% of energy in a data center facility is taken up by the cooling load. Um, so anything that can be done to reduce that, that element, again, makes a significant contribution to uh, reducing carbon and hitting our carbon targets. Um, but one of the reasons why there hasn't been a lot of, uh, or not enough work done in this area is that it's particularly difficult to do it without access to proper data sets, without some intelligent analytics, I mean, without just giving the operators and the owners a little bit of help to make those decisions and to see where changes can be made. Um, and again, one of the issues that, that we see uh, quite a lot is traditional software platforms in the data center space, of, of which there are a number of different types, but they're, they're typically there to provide uh, mission critical failure alerts, um, or basic trending data um, with, with a, a minimal number of um, sensor points. So in, it's just not helpful enough when um, you're trying to find areas of inefficiency, when you're trying to hit a, an energy saving target, a carbon reduction target, or trying to find, identify areas of wastage to, to release some capacity. Um, and, and again, just back, back to EchoSense, that's, that's absolutely the area that we're targeting and definitely where EchoSense can make a difference. Um, and we routinely take out fairly significant chunks of energy up to 30%. So fairly routinely, we, we get involved in those kind of things. But yes, it's a big problem. Yeah, that's interesting. And I mean, and it's so so factual, so point well at the moment uh, with the new climate report that came out with some very scary figures. So we will we'll definitely have to do a, our little bit to help the planet. Um, but let's talk about EcoSense. You've already mentioned a little bit about it, but let's talk about EcoSense. Because I remember you were probably the first one that I've ever seen using VR. Um, in the data center. I think that was back in 2016, we went to yeah. the Excel, um, and that's when I met you. Um, I mean, talk us through the brand, talk us through, you've seen this opportunity very early on, for sure, because um, you started in the mid-2010s, uh, um, earlier than most. Um, talk us through EcoSense, what do you do? How did it come about? Uh, what, why that logo that you got behind you <laughs> with the lizards? <laughs> um, give us a quick like overview of the company. Okay, so one of the best decisions we ever made was uh, have the Gecko as our logo, get more interest and more uh, requests about the logo than anything else so uh, <laughs> um, so maybe we should just start selling uh, geckos um so we're a, a uk-based business um developing or developed a software platform called echosoft critical uh which is today deployed at customers all over the world uh, i think there's most regions of the globe that we cover these days either directly or, or via our uh, fairly extended partner network um very close tie-ins with some leading universities in the uk um, so I do some fairly cutting edge research on machine learning, analytics, uh, virtual reality, and just crunching large data sets. Also gives us access to some of the best people uh, coming off the production line. Uh, I say youngsters, everybody feels like a youngster, but we get access to the best mechanical engineers, best software engineers, best hardware engineers, um, and, and definitely are they are a significant contributor to our business. 
Um, and and what, Echo Sef, uh, what Echo Sense was set up to do is, is to use new technologies, embrace new technologies, be disruptive in the industry, which a company like Echo Sense has to do, um, and really just challenge the way that data centers were being managed, how they're used for um, driving efficiencies, for managing capacity, for managing change, for being able to spot risk. And it, it, again, back to existing incumbent software systems, of which there are many types, we, we, we're just really trying to challenge how they work and deliver a bit more granularity using the very latest technologies. Um, so latest technologies around cloud, around IoT sensors, virtual reality, as you've mentioned, Joe, uh, machine learning, analytics. There's some very nice technologies, security enhancements. Um, there's some, there's some nice technologies now, which, which EchoSense, of course, is based on, which allows you to take very, very detailed, granular, multiple data sets um, and then apply some machine learning analytics to deliver very tangible recommendations. But again, it's um, a lot of existing systems, historical systems, they are normally um, quite technical, quite complex to use. So we're trying to use the technology, use the latest gaming technologies, for example, in the interface, using the VR, as you say, uh, I'm just trying to make very complex PhD level analytics on mechanical or on electrical workloads on airflow, but but give them in a very simple, intuitive, lightweight infrastructure that multiple stakeholders, uh, facilities management companies, multi-tenter facilities, enterprise customers, colo, um, they can all get the benefits and use a very simple set of analytics to deliver very tangible benefits. Um, and and ultimately deliver three things. It's it's always a risk reduction. So spot areas of risk, spot where things are trending in the wrong direction, and, and being able to predict things before they happen and do some um, um, preventative maintenance. But then of course the payback comes in the form of significant energy savings, which is the payback to put these kind of systems in. And energy is always the um, is always the headline. But more and more, again, with power densities, with difficulties of getting power in some regions, it's about optimizing those environments um, for, from a capacity perspective. So make sure you're using the capacity uh, as best as you can, find areas of inefficiency to allow you to, as I say, to run these spaces more efficiently and get more, more kit into the white space ultimately. Um, and, and that's ultimately what EchoSense does. If we look into, for example, CapEx and OpEx, um, do you have some ballpark figures or percentages um, of sure. how much you help to save in a normal data center? Yeah, I mean, on, on average, um, and we work in fairly large data centers, so average data center type halls of 300 racks up to the tens of thousands of racks in the very big facilities. Um, and over a, a sample of hundreds of data centers that we've worked on, uh, it's a 30% um, cooling a energy saving across those benefit uh, across those sites uh, with some customers seeing um, significantly in advance of that 40 45 percent saving so very significant obviously depends on the type of environment type of customer the particular challenges that they've got um, but those energy savings are are usually substantial um, and, and as i mentioned earlier it's energy is typically the the headline but the things that are, are byproducts of the, of the, of the software of, of this type of system, um, it is the ability also, once you've got that granularity of data and that intelligent processing of data is the tangible benefits also around removal of risk, identification and removal of risk and that, that capacity management. Um, and again, it's okay taking significant chunks of energy out or delivering the benefits that I mentioned, but you of course have to deliver it at a with a compelling ROI for the customer to to of course afford it. So it's been there's been a lot of work uh, done on these types of systems, and, and we are no different to really getting um, a compelling ROI. So often uh, it is less than a year, and very rarely is it ever above two years. Again, some of the challenges from customers, very big customers, we're being challenged more and more to again introduce a bit of innovation, a bit of disruption around the uh, funding model, commercial model. So the ability to offer OPEX type models where the service, the software is funded out of energy savings. So there's actually no upfront cost. Customer gets the saving and all the, the benefits we've talked about, and it's funded entirely out of the uh, energy savings. So we're getting more and more of that type of request. Mm, that's interesting. Um, I, I was actually gonna pick up on the customers as well. I mean, we've been going for six, seven, eight years now. Um, and I mean, at the time, I remember the first time we spoke, um, the conversation was even around like, are customers willing to have small sensors deployed into the data center, for example? What, what, what's the customer journey been like since then um, over the last few years? Um, and also in terms of acceptance, 
um, of having this new software and these new deployments in, within the data center space, have this in the benefits. Um, talk us through the customer journey and the acceptance of sure. what you're doing. Some customers have absolutely embraced it. They have CSR targets, uh, corporate targets to deliver energy savings, be um, energy efficient, uh, have significant energy targets, but then I've also got some operational challenges they want a bit of help with. Um, so we have some uh, well-documented case studies. Um, again, you can't talk about all customers in our industry, so every vendor has the same challenge, uh, but the ones that uh, we have got some very public case studies, done some amazing work across, uh, across large chunks of their estate. So digital realty interaction, uh, O2, DAISY, where we, we've deployed our technologies across their estate. Uh, and deliver some fantastic energy savings, uh, plus the operational benefits of, of visibility, risk, and, and capacity. Um, I think the, the the market is is definitely um, starting to wake up a little bit to um, innovative technologies. The challenge has always been some of the big incumbent players, um, of course, claim that they can deliver a lot of that uh, very granular benefit. Um, it's often not the case uh, at all. So. They, they are very good at the, the, the alerting side of it, as I mentioned earlier, some of the trending, but that granularity of data to produce actual energy savings and commit to those energy savings and deliver it, very tangible savings, they, they often are not able to do that. And it needs a disruptive player, disruptive technology like EchoSense and EchoSoft to do that. Um, and, and to be honest, because some of the, those technologies that some of the big operators have deployed um, have, have have clearly not delivered the kind of things um, needed to run a, an efficient uh, lean operation and deliver the benefits and deliver the capacity and energy benefits. I think it needs disruptive new technologies. As I mentioned earlier, the new technologies available, uh, cloud technologies, new breed of software, new breed of analytics like, like EchoSense and other vendors. Mm -hmm. I think it needs that innovation to really be disruptive and deliver the changes that uh, some of the traditional players are just not able to deliver. So it has been a challenge, but Pleased to say that, that most of the vendors are slowly coming around to it now. <laughs> it seems to be going well. Um, and look, then, as you now get into the first decade um, of operations, it's not that far away. Um, I mean, yeah. what, what's next? What are you planning? You're a UK based business. Um, yeah. Are we looking to intercontinental expansions? I mean, we are still, I don't know if it's safe to say coming out of COVID, but we are still going through COVID, which has yeah. boosted data into business as well. I mean, yeah. what, what is the business um, working on for the future, for the next two, sure. three years? Um, so a few things. So naturally, as a, uh, a very ambitious scaling business like ours, um, in geographical expansion has to be right at the forefront. So we've recently taken on um, uh, first employees incorporated in the US, taken on VP of sales in various regions. So APAC, MIA, US, uh, getting some business out of Africa, uh, some Latin American countries. So starting to, to geographically spread and, and, and get uh, global reach. Um, so that, that's a given really uh, for, for any kind of uh, ambitious business like ours. But where, where we're really driven and, and where business like EchoSense, that, that, I'd say that disruptive, innovative business, um, it is, of course, always around the technology and the business models and, and customers. So we've got our own pipeline of work uh, that, that would see us going for a long, long time. But customers naturally give you a, another set of challenges and things they want to see and, and piecing that all together into a coherent roadmap. Um, so we see it will always be a, um, a focus of ours is around the optimization, put, putting the power of PhD skill sets, mechanical electrical skill sets into a set of very simple, intuitive, easy to use analytics and, and interface. So cooling advisor, which allows a customer to, to make those changes in a very dynamic and data center environment without the need for consultancy led engagements. Cooling advisor will always um, get a lot of focus. And then the, the, the other big one for us uh, in terms of technology is around the capacity management. So again, just challenging the way things have always been done with lots of manual methods or complex spreadsheets or unwieldy DSIM type systems. Um, just doing again, a very lightweight capacity management, but purely for the mechanical electrical side. Um, we, we, we are working quite a lot on, uh, on the whole capacity management side of it and introducing some fairly significant functionality in the next six months towards the end of the year, which allows you to model and simulate some of the big uh, central plant changes. And then finally, we will also expand and grow and help spread the message with technology partnerships. So a couple of very nice technology partnerships in the pipeline, uh, a recent one that we've announced with uh, an asset management company called Assets Buyer, 
uh, which again is just challenging traditional ways of managing mechanical, electrical and the IT side of it into a new breed of DSIM tool, uh, which collectively we can deliver. So again, I, whilst we, we are very good at what we do, there are areas where we can collaborate and have some very nice technology integration. Yeah. Well, I mean, that all sounds very exciting because, um, I mean, going circling back to almost the beginning of our conversation, when I met you, it was the very, the very beginning. Uh, I think it was only a handful of you guys still working <laughs> um, in the company at the time. So it's grown a lot since then. Um, but then if people want to find more information about Ecosense, reach out, um, maybe read those case studies that you mentioned before as well. Um, where, where can people go? Okay. Um, so delighted to have a conversation with anybody. The, the website, ecosense.com, naturally a great source of information. So products, benefits use cases. We also try and do a lot on thought leadership uh, and, and explain our methods, the, the results we get and, and how we go about that. So we published a couple of really nice white papers that are on there. One about AI machine learning to deliver optimization. One about the energy saving work that we talked about. So the website's always the, the first source and the great source of getting information. Um, so also a couple of very useful videos on there to give a high level summary of the software, give you some of the key features and just show you how it can help. Um, the other the other outlet for us is LinkedIn. We do a lot of work on LinkedIn and, and all product updates, uh, partner news, new white papers, etc. Are, are always on the uh, LinkedIn, and we'd always encourage people to follow the company LinkedIn page. Naturally, of course, we've got various salespeople, direct and a, a extensive partner network who would be delighted to uh, help and, and arrange a software demo or, or meet up or have a call. Uh, and, and please just get in touch with one of the uh, regional sales team or one of our global partners via the website. A lot of things that avenues to get in touch. <laughs> Definitely, always. Um, Dean Boyle, CEO of Ecosense, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, and thank you to our viewers for tuning into JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. And don't forget to check our social channels for more content. Until next time, happy networking.